Okay, this is a sort of sudden, just on its own book review, but it's not merely a book review. It's a book review about a book I think you ought to get. And I just learned of this on Twitter. Somebody liked a post I made, and I didn't, you know, that was the guy's name. And I looked, at, I always look at the names of people to see who they are. And he wrote this book. And I thought, oh, because he doesn't know me from Adam's Off Ox. But I want to define stuff like this book. So I went and I got it. I got the Kindle edition. I'm going to talk about that. But first I want to talk about, because the price is, you know, a little bit high for some people. I want to talk about why this book is so important right now because of Donald Trump. Let me turn the sound down so I don't sound too loud. Wait a minute. Well, you'd say, well, what the heck does this book, The Modern Cultural Myth of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, what does that have to do with Donald Trump? Well, I'm going to try and explain it. Okay? But first, let's get some housekeeping things out of the way. The Prime version, or the one being advertised here, is only one left. But there are 29 new ones from 70 bucks. The Kindle book is 80 bucks. That's the one I just got. The used ones are more expensive. I don't know why. Okay. I'm still talking about just the housekeeping. The Kindle book is very badly organized, but it is legible. Okay? Each Kindle book is not Kindle's fault. The seller who converts the hardback to Kindle gets to decide all the parameters about how they create the Kindle book. Okay? And in this particular case, the people who designed it badly designed it. Okay? It's legible. And it doesn't use Greek text. So, I mean, I didn't see any. Even though this covers Greek history also. Um, so, it's legible, but it's like you better bookmark the table of contents and you can't find it real easily at first. And it's just not all that well navigable. The best Kindle book I've ever bought in was J.B. Burry's History of the Roman Empire. In Kindle, it's one of the best organized books I've ever seen. And also his stuff on Julia Domna. Or the book on Ju Julia Domna. There's only a few of them in Amazon. That Kindle book is really well organized. This one is not well organized. But it is legible. And if you're going to be going on vacation and you don't mind reading and bookmarking all the time in order to find your way. Because there are no page numbers in the Kindle. It's a real big failing of this kind of structure um, then you know by all means get the Kindle okay because because one of the things that's happening now especially on Android is that a lot of apps are keying themselves so that if you got a Kindle book they'll be able to read it too and maybe they'll have features that what I'm complaining about you know won't exist okay so if other than Kindle readers can read this book. Maybe this book has other features that are better that the Kindle structure doesn't access. Okay? So, here's how you can buy it new. If you don't have the money, but you're a Bible student, you better you better ask God for the money. Now, you don't hear me do this too much. Alright? To just, like, insist. But I'm gonna. Now, I'm gonna tell you why. Okay? The theme of this book, and you got to read it to believe it, because if I just tell you what it is, you're not going to believe it. This guy goes through the painstaking exercise of basically showing how all of us are so enamored of Rome, and especially about the way it fell. Now, that's really important if you're a Bible student, because one of the harder things to explain to your students if you're a teacher is the the shocking wording in the Bible about how Rome is going to be the, the you know the entity that everybody drools over at the end of time it's like well it's dead 
it, it was dead. It had a lot of problems in it. Okay, it had some nice buildings, which are now in ruins. See, look at the picture. But how could people be so enamored of Rome 2,000, 3,000 years later when the alleged, you know, tribulation is going to take place? And why is Daniel 9 talking about the prince of the people who take down the temple or it's going to be the same one who takes down you know, d during the tur tribulation. It seems really far-fetched. But it isn't far-fetched when you look at the cultural grip that the concept of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire has had on people who, by their own lights, they don't believe in God. They drool over the greatness of Rome. Which is just what Revelation 18 is talking about. Okay? And Revelation 17, if you've seen my Revelation 17 sarcasm tour videos, you realize that, oh, it's an annual plot of all the times past attempts to revive the Roman Empire have occurred. It's a satirical map of what we would call history but what was then yet future. And it took me, I think, what, 12 videos to show it line by line, year by year, the satire that John created there in Revelation 17. Because, and here's the kicker, the people behind Donald Trump and the people behind Vladimir Putin both aim to revive Rome. The people behind Donald Trump call themselves Seven Mountains. And instead of looking for Feynman, who's a really neat physicist who's really fun to listen to, you could type in, watch me do it so you can do it, Seven Mountains Trump Anointed. And this guy right here, real jerk, he makes a lot of videos and he runs around talking about how he went and personally visited Trump and has his ear and thinks that Trump is the next Cirrus. He's actually met Trump and talked to Trump. But it's not just Trump anointed. Watch this. Yeah, there we go. Rafael Cruz, remember him? That's Don. That's uh, Ted Cruz's dad. Sorry, something fell down. He's Ted Cruz's dad. And what you want to do when you hear these people, you want to hear them in their own words. Don't, don't click on videos that are critical of them. Listen to them talk. So, you want to listen to Wall now explain Seven Mountains in his own words. Okay? Then, Rafael Cruz in his own words. And when you listen to them, you're going to find out a really horrible thing. They want to unite church and state. They think that's going to bring Christ back. And guess what time it is? The 2000th anniversary of the cross is coming up in 2030. So getting the seven mountains of their political power in place by then. Oh, well, Christ is going to have to come back because this is the 2000th anniversary of his death. You see, they got a timing game going on. Now, this isn't the first time in history these ideas have been broached. A thousand years ago, one of the reasons we had the Crusades was because it was coming up on a thousand years after Christ's death. And they thought if they went to war and defeated the Muslims, is it beginning to sound familiar? That Christ will come back. And the guy who talks about that a lot is a guy named Richard Landis, a different Richard. The 
the sky. Okay? And he spent a lot of time, just, you know, you, really this is the best place of his to go to. Alright, I want to show that. Okay. He writes a lot of stuff. Okay? Or, you can just go to melee.org where the stuff is located. Okay? And click on links, really. I think that's what I did. Uh, no, not that one. Um, scholarship and research. Yeah. Especially these. Fear of Apocalyptic Year 1000. How the psychology. That's what I'm trying to focus on here. That's what this book is really about. The psychology of it. The psychology of humans coming up on the thousandth anniversary or the two thousandth anniversary of Christ's death. That there is this. It's called Kiliasm. That's just a fancy word for 1,000, okay? It's a recurring thing in history, and he spent a lot of time, Landis did, spent him, Kessler, these guys. They, uh, these are all clickable links to their articles. They spent a lot of time exploring the psychological impact, okay? This guy, and I don't know if they know each other, this guy, Dr. Theodore, he's also... Ex you know, spending time on the on the psychological impact. And what his book basically does, I mean, I haven't completely read it yet, but I've skimmed through it. His book traces the enormous, enduring hold on the mind of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. So when he says cultural myth, he's not saying it's a false story. Okay? The, the word myth in English, in Greek, mutas, means a story of a people, okay? And yeah, it's got a lot of falsehood in it, as any story does when it's told over and over through the centuries. But it's essentially an intent to teach by telling the story of your people or your history over and over. That's where we get the word story from. His story, got it? So why is it so interesting, even today, when what Rome really was, if we were teleported back into that time, we wouldn't recognize it based on what we think now? I mean, that Gladiator movie, for example, okay? It, it's based on a false premise. The, tru the truth was that Marcus Aurelius for all of his vaunted self being a philosopher, was really bad at picking people. And he crowned his own son as the next emperor when his own son was age five. That totally went against all Roman culture. Okay? So, why are we so entranced by that, that the Gladiator movie is so wonderful? Why are we so entranced by decline and fall? And why specifically of Rome? And it's a hard thing to understand until you read this book. Okay? And if you're a teacher of Bible, you're going to come across people like me, who when we hear that, we want to believe it, because we believe in God and everything. But it's a real stretch to say, oh, it's this old, dead culture from 2,000 years ago that somehow is going to magically revive and be what the Antichrist comes from because that's what the Bible is saying well it gets a whole lot easier to believe once you read this book and you see just how enduring that myth is that everybody's constantly trying to revive the Roman Empire it becomes easier to believe when you read this about how people kept trying to revive the Roman Empire after after the West died and especially after the East died and it becomes even more more believable when you search on 
the seven mountains that we did here okay because of what the doctrine is the doctrine believes in this myth and the doctrine actually reverses it and thinks that bringing back a glorified Rome is a good idea they literally reverse the book of Revelation they're so bad at reading it okay that's Cruz that's wall now that's the Trump camp okay remember see this guy and most so-called evangelicals have this set of beliefs now okay Pat Robertson Jerry Falwell James Dobson uh, Sarah Palin a lot of the big names in Christianity actually subscribe to this weird antichrist doctrine that they think is actually Christian and holy and calling themselves seven mountains when Revelation 17 is about the horror on the seven mountains you see the power of the psychology there so you see why this book might be really important to read because it's explaining the hold on it and the enduring myth quality because he's tracing the popularity of this topic historically and how ingrained it is in our culture even today yeah so then now it becomes easier to understand why these people are so fixated and they don't understand well the Bible predicted you'd be fixated and it's telling us all therefore that these people are like little antichrists now, whether you're saved or not doesn't matter the definition antichrist in the Bible is not about whether you're saved or not saved. It's about whether you're against God. And anti really means instead in Greek. Okay, it doesn't mean against. It comes to mean against because you're substituting something else for, for God. Alright? And that's what they're doing. They're substituting politics for God. Alright? And the phenomenon of this happening tied to millennialism is what these guys focus on at Boston U. They're really good at this. These articles are sterling. Okay? Especially Landis. I mean, it's it, that's not to badmouth Dr. Kessler or Lammy or but but Landis, I don't know, just I I could read it once and I got exactly what he meant. Um so this book and this guy, I don't know if he's related to them at all in any way, if they even know each other, ties like to bring full circle this stuff on the millennium, millennialism, to this stuff on the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. Because, of course, in the Bible, it's tied to millennialism. But you, even people who don't believe in Christ or think that, you know, Bible's bupkis, they're all enamored of the Roman Empire, which of course is what Revelation 18 says. What I'm trying to tell you is there is a movement politically right now in the United States at a time when we're coming up on the second millennium. Because it's not countdown 2000, it's countdown 2030. 2000 years after Christ died. People are getting antsy for the coming of Christ. And these people think that if they take over political power, they can bring Jesus back. Now, I haven't filled out the last part of the story, but you're hopefully getting the idea that not only is this a psychological tracing, that, you know, everybody in history, oh, the fall of Rome, oh, the fall of Rome, oh, the fall of Rome. Not only is it tied to millennialism, which you can read in any of these articles here, and not only are these people who back Trump adherents to such ideas in their own twisted way, twisting the Bible out of context, but here's, here's the second kicker. Russia has the same deal. They call it Third Rome. And if you were to type in Third Rome Putin, you get some articles that tell you about what it means. Okay? The Russian Empire considers itself to be the Third Rome. 
okay and there is there is a whole bunch of material you can read on this but not you don't see it on this page there's a guy called I'll just have to do a new search remember this or you know pause the video or something when you want to do search again there's a guy called John Skylitzes. He was alive during the Middle Ages. He wrote his own little history called A Synapsis of the Byzantine Empire. And he wrote it he wrote it ab about ten fifty seven or so. I mean, you know, he wrote he didn't quite finish it. He died while he was writing it. Alright. Um, this is really a fantastic set of books. You can get it at Fordham University online. Okay, you don't have to buy it. But when you read all this stuff, then you see how enamored they were then, just like this book is saying, of Rome. Enamored of Rome. But in this context now, what I want you to see is that this is Byzantium. Russia considers itself to be the inheritor of Rome because first it was Western Rome and that died in 476 then it was the Byzantine Empire and that died in 1453 and by then the Byzantines had converted the Russians you know Russia became uh, Russia you know around it's just, people talk about it variantly but it was roughly around the 800s that it really started to become an entity and that was exactly when um, I don't want to get too much in the weeds here that was exactly when the uh, Bible was first translated into the Cyrillic alphabet. Cyrillic is named after Cyril, the guy who actually invented the alphabet for the Moravians, and the Russians got it that way. And they converted to Christianity big time. Not just because they really believed in Christ, they had other motives too, as we all have. But the point is that they consider themselves today to be the inheritors. Okay? And here are some articles on it that you can read. Okay. See, I didn't make this up. This is where I learned it from. I had no idea. But there's another one. Which, like, Skylitz's is really important to read to get the whole history contemporary about where this myth comes from. But the one that's more important um, mm, let me do Last Emperor Myths. It's at Academia NU. Yeah, this guy, right here. He goes through the history. Well, it's not just him. He's not the only one. There was another one. Um, but it, it'll get you started. Okay? Unless he's changed the cover, because I downloaded it, and it, it doesn't look like this, and it, this wasn't the name. But... That's a myth, too, that is persistent today amongst the Russians. And Putin plays to it, as you can see when you start going through these um, articles. So now look at the tie here. You got this book, which goes through the phenomenal enduringness of the fixation on the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, even among people who call themselves atheists. That's that's like Little Pillar 1. Alright. Little Pillar 2, which is another facet of the same fascination, is all these ties to the millennium based on a prediction of a revived Rome in the Bible. Remember? The Bible talks about it in Daniel 9, 24 through 27 and Revelation 17 and 18. And that explains a lot of why we are looking and focusing so much on the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. 
because that empire was supposed to be revived and when you go through and you read some of these things you get more detail on what people in the past tried to do to revive it it's an ongoing historical trend okay of history and it's starting all over again because in the United States backing Trump you got the seven mountains which is core to their beliefs is that the millennium will come but they can usher Christ in okay it's really anti-semitic at its core okay but you're gonna you're gonna have to read this for yourself because you know I didn't believe it either until I read it till I heard them talk myself I couldn't believe it because it sounds like you know science fiction all right and then in the in the Moscow side of things see it helps explain the Trump Putin connection it's not just Trump and it's not just Putin there's much more to it so you know impeaching Trump isn't gonna stop this I want the guy dead but God isn't gonna do it that way because it, first of all the problem is much deeper the people in the US who have the same doctrine false doctrine of course as the people in Moscow that goes all the way back in time to John Skylitz's back in well even before that to the 800s AD which this guy traces okay and it's not just him there are other books related to it here so you just search on Leg third Rome last emperor myth academia at you or even leave academia at you out but the best articles I found on it were at academia at you so here they are okay so now you got pillar one the factual historical review of this book I'm, tr I'm urging you to ask God to get the money for to buy okay but preferably not in Kindle unless you don't mind how, how hard it is to navigate. Because maybe you prefer that to hardcover. That's pillar one. Just the data. Just the facts, ma'am. Okay, and then here's another set of facts. Because this set of facts is the facts of the psychology of it. And how that psychology displays in all of our cultural depictions. And Gibbon's own obsession with the Roman Empire. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now you compare this to see the biblical connection. And we're still not talking about the actual Bible and what it says, or whether it's right or wrong. We're talking about the psychological effect on people of the prediction in the Bible about the millennium. They relate Rome to the millennium and to Christ's return. So there's pillar one, here's pillar two. Okay. Pillar 3, which is part of this, but he doesn't cover the, the Rome thing very much, is this. And then you these papers in particular deal with it the most. Okay, and then John Skylitz's. This guy up here, right up here. It's not just him. There's another one whose name I forget right now. But John Skylitz has wrote a lot about it. Okay. Now you can search on Third Rome or Seven Mountains in my Twitter feed. Hashtag Seven Mountains, one word, you know, run together. Hashtag Third Rome. And while I've been writing about this, because it all came up when we started to learn that Matthew 24 prophecy stuff. I had no idea of any of this until then. I started collecting information and then I would save it with the hashtag of Third Rome or Seven Mountains. So there are, there's more information that I'm giving you in this video. Okay? And like I said, it's a legend. See? Now that legend is about the revival of Rome. So now see, we come full circle back to this book. Okay? And that's the Kindle edition. All right? And it's well written, okay? It's just that the Kindle format is sucks, right? I think it sucks. Maybe you won't mind. But I don't like it when I have to keep pushing pages to the left, to the left, to the left, and that I don't have 
you know page numbers that correspond to the actual print book and it, it's just I I don't like the way Kindle's constructed maybe you will but it's it's readable very readable text very good flow to the writing and all that good stuff it'll take you maybe I don't know two three hours to go through it it's not hard okay um and then here we go tied to today the psychology that this book and this is covering is tied to today in Russia it is a political ploy of Putin to get the Christians on his side in Russia and then Donald Trump of course was courting the Seven Mountains people to have them on his side and that's why he won the election now, how much did Russia really interfere? I don't know. But you you got to ask yourself, how do Christians justify this to themselves? Well, this is how. We're going to bring Christ back because his 2000th anniversary is coming up. And this is all the psychology behind that in his story. Okay. And then this goes through the psychology of the whole Roman Empire fall and revival thing. And all of that's tied to, of course, Revelation 17, Revelation 19, and Daniel 9 of the Bible that you can see in English. There's a lot more ties to in the Greek. And I've been doing videos on Matthew 24 that takes you all over the passages, the other ones that tie. Okay? So, bear in mind, we're talking about psychology. This, the enduring psychology and fixation. Why? The fixation on the Roman Empire. And then this guy traces out the history of that. And then by the end of his book, I've read the conclusion already. I'm not going to tell you what he concluded. But, you know, the basic idea is is that the, the um, obsession is provable. It's culturally built into our warp and woof. All right. And then, but also, the whole millennialism, chiliasm, premillennial, rapture's coming, Ma rapture palooza, blah, 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 blah. It's all built in. Now, the rapture is a valid doctrine, but the psychology makes it sound and look goofy. So, these people are goofy. And, of course, they're backing Trump, so you know that they're goofy. All right? And this is the same kind of movement, but it's in Russia. Backing Putin. And the, the story on it goes all the way back to, you know, the time of the, the Byzantines. Well, that's over 2,000 years, or almost 2,000 years. So you're going to you have a, a lot of homework to do. And then you want to research this guy. Okay? And then you also want to go to Fordham University, Medieval Studies, my favorite website of all time. This one. This is where you can find the actual original materials. Okay. So then it's like selected sources, full text sources. Okay, selected sources. Let me increase the size here so you can see it. In a classical world. Byzantium, see, and it, it, each of these not necessarily visible here. You have to go like there, and now you get links that you can actually follow. Okay, and this is going to go through all the stuff that I just told you. All right, then they got full text sources. See, full text sources. All right. And then that is subdivided again, like by Byzantium. And then you can play with all this to read this stuff. Okay? And of course you can just Google it if you, if you don't want to remember all this navigation. But this is like the premier 
Fordham University, it's a Jesuit school. Internet Medieval Source Book. I wanted my niece to go to this school, and she refused. I'm really mad at her. If I were 20 years old again, or 18 years old again, this is where I go. Okay? And, you know, they're secular and apostate like everybody else. That doesn't matter. You just, you know, it's like when you hear something, like if you hear me talking, I might say something that you don't agree with, or you think is wrong, or you just are bored. Okay, so you tune it out. And tune in the stuff that's worthwhile. Okay? It says really good, um, it's not here. It has a really good uh, Muslim section. Okay, so Fordham is the other place you can go. All right, to learn about how true it is that these people are all hung up the wrong way and are basically adhering to the same doctrine as the Russian Christians. So it isn't just Trump loving Putin. So when you hear Christians trying to defend, you know, the collusion, well, this is why, because they share the same false doctrine. This is dangerous. And that's why I'm doing all those videos on Matthew 24, because Christ predicted everything I'm talking about right now. I didn't know that. We found it by mistake. Okay? So, Seven Mountains, that's the movement in the U.S. That's the movement in Russia. And the, the story of this revival of the Roman Empire goes back 2,000 years. Which, to save you a little bit of time, okay, because time is worth money, you can read about here. You get it on Kindle, you can read it at leisure, you know, when you're standing in line at the subway or, you know, waiting for food or something, read a couple of pages at a time. It's not hard, okay. It's an easy to read book. That tells you the psychology going up to today with a lot of examples from today. So you can understand the pull of Seven Mountains and the pull of Third Rome. And the guy who's writing this stuff didn't know what I'm telling you right now. Because this isn't about Bible, really. He's not, he's not you know, a, a Bible scholar. All right, he's, he's done some research in it, but he's not he's not like a Bible teacher. Okay? And then here, tying to it, again, these people are not, they're not trying to sell you on the idea of the millennium. If anything, they think it's dangerous. Yeah, it is. Okay? The Bible always says that it is. It's a question of which millennium. Well, we're coming up on Countdown 2030. Okay? So you want to start getting the, the psychology here too. So psychology here, psychology here. Here's the West with Donald Trump. Here's the East with Putin. Including all the background story about how that got that way. And it's all encapsulated here and here. So you can just read those two. But to see the contemporary influence of it, you want to go here. And you want to go here. And like I said, your best sources for reading this, I mean, you can go through this whole section. But The Legend of the Last Emperor, okay? The, but it's not the only book that they do. All these Academia and You books, okay? I don't remember which particular one I had read that I found so much more important. But it's, it's somewhere up in these first six, seven of them. So you look at the Academia Ed U books, and then you go to Fordham. And that the point is, is to read contemporary accounts. And each one of these things feeds into the other. So that's why I say buy this book. Now, you know, if I sound like a salesman, I'm sorry. But I've been looking for a book like this for the last two years. And the closest thing I had found until today was this wonderful stuff by Dr. Landis. Okay. And now I got, as it were, a second witness. And it's all to answer the question, 
how come it's Rome that gets revived? That's kind of unrealistic that people would want to keep reviving Rome. What's so compelling about that? Yeah, that's the question this guy seeks to answer in his book. So, buy it. Now, if you don't have the money, ask God. Okay? Peace out.